What's up, world? It's your boy Gambit, representing Underground Sound Records out here in Lafayette, Louisiana. Today I'm going to be showing you a tutorial on how to mix and master your beat and some techniques that hopefully you can mix and master your beats to get that industry sound that you've been looking for. Now you might be asking yourself, why do I need tips and pointers on how to mix and master my beats? And the answer is, everybody, no matter what genre of hip-hop and rap or R&B that you're in, wants to get that loud, crisp industry sound out of their beats. And today, no matter what doll that you're using, that's going to come with some plugins or it's going to come with some EQs and compressors. And hopefully today I can show you some techniques that you can translate over into your doll to get you on the right road to make your beat sound the way that you want it to be. Because that's the ultimate goal as producers. Some people send their stuff off to get tracked out and then mix and master and sent back to them and then they sell it to the consumers. Me, I've taught myself some stuff, self-taught. I've uh, watched a lot of tutorials like this one that you're watching right now and hopefully I could show you like others have showed me how to mix and master your beats. Alright, so we got everything tracked out in Pro Tools. Let's put this down right here. We have everything tracked out in Pro Tools right here. I have my kick right here. I have my 808s up here. I have three different 808s that I play differently in each one, so I just tracked it out and I put it in here. Um, I have my claps right here set out to a certain bus. I have my snare rolls set out to a different bus. And then I have my hi-hats and cymbals all into one bus. I'm going to explain what busing is in just a second. But first, I'm going to let y'all hear what we're working with right here. Alright, so we got several different instruments in here. Also, after I brought it in here, I also used some of the instruments in Pro Tools and some other little things that I have. And I'm going to show you what I did to those. Alright, so whenever you're dealing with stuff in Pro Tools, to save time, what you do is, is you make buses. You sa to save time and to save DSP, the power of your computer given out, you save buses. And right now, I'm going to show you how I did that. And uh, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to make a bus... For just how I did my snares and everything else, I'm making a bus for my 808s the way I have them up here. Alright, so I went to track, create a bus. Some of this stuff you can't really do in free loops, but I can show you the effects and everything. Take it, it's just the, it's really just the EQ. I'm going to put the compressor, but as you see, I have it right click, I have it bypassed. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all this out like this. Come like right here take all the inserts out of all the 808s. I'll come right here to my bus. I'm gonna make this bus 13 and 14. And what I'm gonna do is put it output 13, 14. Do it to all of them. Then what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna set my bus to volume negative eight because that's what I had all these two. And then that way, I'm going to set all these up to zero. That way you take all the variables out of the situation. Instead of having to change three knobs, all I have to do is just change one. Now, whenever you want to listen to it in a bus, now I soloed it out. You might not be able to hear it in your speakers, but that's the 808 right there. As we see, this one's playing right here, but it's also playing through the bus. But it's also set at volume like that. All right, now let's check out the kick. So I'm going to go through each thing. Let's do this. These little input buttons right here is what makes it do what it does and sets these bands to where you do it. What I do is I put a high pass. This right here, this is just would be a flat EQ.
Now I'm just gonna go straight to this kick right here. Now what this does, the hot pass is gonna tell all these frequencies behind 33 hertz. Sometimes, you know, you can put it out 28 or whatever. You don't wanna take away all the bass out of the kick, but what I do is I just tighten up the kick a little bit. And then I set my 60 hertz to about one dB. You could turn it up a little bit as you please, you know. What that does is that adds the, the more bass to the kick drum where it's hitting. And I can show you right here. Put a plug in real quick. This is a spectrum analyzer. This is showing where it's kicking. You see right here at the 60 hertz, it's exactly where it's kicking. So it's just adding a little bit of attack to it. If you wanted to add some more attack, this 100 rate region right here has got a lot you could add to the kick. All right, so just going through, I take a little bit of the 300 region usually out of some of my kicks. Some of them I take a little bit less, some of them I take a little bit more. Since I have an 808 here, I want the attack from the kick, so I'm using this EQ. And while I take away my 5 kilohertz range, I don't do this with all of them. Some of them I do more, some of them I do less. I'm going to turn this up a little bit. It's at negative 6.5 dB. That's where I had it because that's where I like it for this specific kick. What you can do is, is you can phase sweep it. And this kick right here, I can hear it right here at this 5.25 kilohertz range. You can sweep it using the frequency thing right here. When I come back to this 5.2 kilohertz range right here, you hear a little whistle almost, and I don't like that really in my kicks. So let me go back. And what I did was is I set my cue all the way up to where it's only taken out of that one frequency very small instead of taking a lot out of it. All right, so that's my kick. I'm EQ the kick. Let me go unsolo all this out right here. All right. Now let's go to the claps. I got my first clap. Let's go right here. Let's listen to this clap. Go solo out the bus where I put it in down here. Now I got an EQ. It's pretty simple. I, I put a little high pass to take some of that away. I added some in the uh, 1,000 kilohertz range. 1,000 hertz range, whatever, 1K. I just added, you know, 0.5 dB to give a little bit more to the the clap added to the seven kilohertz range that is that's where it really is at and I added a little bit of air over here let's take this to about right here to about 12 just add a little bit of air and add some more crispness to your snare really it comes in right here the attack's going to come from like right around here at the seven hertz range i also have a compressor pretty fast attack fast release I set my kicks and snares to negative 15 threshold and um, my gain to about 2 to 3 dB, somewhere in that range. A ratio of 2 to 1, you could set it to 4 to 1. I like to do a little bit less. Now this clap right here has got some reverb on it. I got some uh, a plate. You could do a plate or a hall. See how the plate has more high end in it? Go back to where I was. I like this one because it didn't add too much high end just going all over the place. And I just added a little bit. Now if I do this, it kind of just swallows up the whole snare if you turn the mix all the way up on the D-verb. You might be able to hear it in your speakers. You might not. Might want to go get you some, some MDRs and listen to it real quick. Alright, so that's my first snare. Now I have my other set of snares that's pretty much the same. Pretty much the same settings as far as the compressor and this EQ goes. Now let's say I wanted to take those settings over here to the snare duplicate bus, which is for my snare roll. The difference between these two is, is that I barely have any reverb, if not any. Sometimes I don't put any snare rolls because you're playing a high pitch snare roll. It just, it kind of has that, uh, that high end that if you put the reverb in, it just doesn't give it the same attack. So when you're adding reverb to certain things, keep that in mind. Then I have my cymbals. It's real simple. I don't put a compressor on my cymbals. I just 
put some up here in this 12k range to give it a little Christmas to stand out in the mix. And that's why you EQ each thing separately. Let me go back to my kit because I forgot to show you the, the compressor. I have a fast all the way release, almost the same, maybe a little bit faster than the snare. Now, it, I set my compressors to the envelope of the sound that you have. So if you have a fast attack kick and you want to bring that out of the sound and you don't want the compressor to cut it all out, but you also want to keep it standing in the mix a certain way, a compressor could be a great tool for you to be able to do that. Now what I do is I have the same threshold as my kick, uh, my snare, and I have about the same gain, same ratio. You could also set the ratio to 4 to 1 if you want. I like to keep my, uh, my mixes pretty well dynamic and I don't want to take too much away and over compress it and I'm gonna get into the multi-band compressor and why I use that over my master bus instead of using something else like a regular compressor that would just compress one band as a whole now I have a harder knee right here this is the knee on this compressor on the digi rack um, I could show you all some other kind of uh, compressors and stuff later now what I'm gonna do is, is I'm just gonna play this a little bit Look at these these stacked strings right here. Now, for the whole mix, I've already mixed everything, but I can show you real quick. I have one pan this way. All right, so I have two different sets of strings playing at the same time, and to save confusion for the listeners, I pan one almost the same amount of way, and I have one turned down a little bit because it's hitting a little bit harder. But they're both playing, and you have all these other instruments playing, and that's why I pan things like this. But also, whenever you're panning, you got to keep in mind, whatever you put one way to the left, you're going to need to put something else to counteract it. That's the best way I can explain it for you to have a leveled mix. Alright, so I have two different bells right here. I really didn't take any dynamics put an EQ on there I think I had some reverb on them as they already were played in reason and I had them like that um, I saved some settings and reason for my strings to, to kind of give them that orchestra sound let's go up to the choir <laughs> Now, that's a pretty dynamic choir. I mean, it's not a, a synthetic synth choir. That's a, a real choir out of the uh, East and West pack. And what I did was I just threw EQ on it. I'm sure that they already had a lot of it compressed and EQ'd. So I added a light EQ. I had some settings in here. Turned it down a little bit to give them, you know, give them the justice in the mix to be able to hear it like it would be a real choir. Um, let's go down here to some of these synths. Now, I I like some of the stuff that they have in Pro Tools and uh, Expand, and this is what I'm going to show you right here. See what I did? I bypassed all the effects that I already had on here. What I did was, is I, I put, uh, now you could use this as, this compressor as a limiter, setting the ratio all the way up and using the threshold and the gain to pretty much make it louder or level it out in the mix because pretty much a limiter is the same thing as a compressor. It's just set differently. Or I can come in here like this, set my ceiling a certain way. Now I could pick which one I want, the one the compressor set to a limiter or the limiter set to a limiter.
things, these two scents are going to clash in the mix if I had them both panned to the center. So what I did was, I pan one hard left and one hard right pretty much the same way. And I put some separate effects on there. I put one with, uh, and a lot of these in Expand have a lot of different effects as it is. But what I did was put a chorus on one and, and mix it the way that I want to. And a flanger. And let's hear a difference. Right here. This this flanger on this this arpagated uh arpagated my bad arpagated scent right here that I put in here, it kind of gives it that 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 translucent feeling like it's coming in and out of phase like a phaser, but it's a flange effect that I put, and I could do this all the way and it kind of detunes it a little bit, but I kind of like it on a lower setting. But it makes it stand out more to where whenever you hear the other scent, which is a lead that I have in here, that I added a little bit of chorus to, it kind of makes it stand out better. And last but not least, let's go to my master bus. Let's look at something real quick. Now here is a limited uh, multi-band compressor. I have an EQ and I have uh, stereo imagery. I also have a linear EQ, phase EQ, and I have a limiter. And um, this is my pass anal analyzer. Pretty much just going to analyze everything. Now you can see these were set at something. But what I can do right now is reset everything. And these thresholds right here is what you got to watch, are the thresholds. back and you set everything up and you go through each one and what it does is it compresses each band separately that way and I've been looking at a lot of people's beats and I can show y'all later what I'm talking about it just squashes the dynamics of it completely and that's not what you want you want your beat to be dynamic but loud and then I have an L2 an L2 limiter set to negative 5.6 threshold. Now you get adjusted to how you want. Um, if I'm selling it to somebody else, I usually do it a bit, a little bit louder so I can put my vocals in there and it doesn't have, don't have to turn my vocals up real loud and do all that. And if I'm selling it to somebody else, I usually make it a little bit louder because that's what people look for. They want something that's going to be hitting nice and sitting nice by itself to where the beat can tell its own story. And it can sit well, uh, no matter if you put vocals over it, if you don't. And um, my pass analyzer is going to tell me exactly where in decibels it's going to sit over in the mix. And as far as like average, how much is shit hitting averagely? You could load it like this. You could do like the average MS and let it play through. And it's going to tell you exactly what you need to know out of the mix. To have something consistent is good for mastering. But that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to be posting tutorials a little bit and I'm going to show you how to solo out everything in your DAW and I'm also going to show you how to just mix straight out of your DAW uh, with Reason and Fruity Loops. I'm going to be getting into Logic later this year. But that's pretty much it. This has been an underground sound production. I hope you've gotten something out of this. I hope you get to it and use some of these techniques in your beats of your own.